Welcome back. So in the last lecture, I showed you that in addition to having uh, matrix systems of equations x dot equals ax, where you get uh, stable eigenvalues, things like e to the minus lambda t, or unstable eigenvalues, things like e to the plus lambda t, there are also these kind of strange cases where you can get this, it's almost like an in-between type dynamics, where it looks initially unstable, but then eventually uh, the trajectory becomes stable. This is called transient energy growth. Uh, and then eventually it goes into stable decay. And this is going to be uh, a phenomena we see in matrix systems of equations where the A matrix is so-called non-normal, meaning that A transpose A does not equal to A times A transpose. And this is a very, very common feature in lots of dynamical systems. So things like fluid flows, highly sheared fluid flows where you have um, uh, literally high shear in, in that fluid, like, like a pipe flow, flow through a pipe, where you have much faster flow in the middle and slower flow on the outside. That is going to be a shear dominated flow. And the A matrix for the linearized system are, is going to be non-normal and give rise to this kind of interesting, uh, this interesting behavior here. And I'm going to claim that just like this is governed by e to the lambda t and this is governed by e to the lambda t for a stable or an unstable lambda, here the dynamics are going to be dominated by a term that looks like t times e to the lambda t. Uh, and that comes up when you have a matrix of this form here where you have a repeated eigenvalue. So in the past, what I've shown you is matrix, uh, matrices A where you have distinct eigenvalues, maybe one's real, uh, maybe, maybe one's positive and one's negative, or two are real and dis, you know, positive and distinct, two are negative and distinct, or two are complex conjugates. Here, in this case, we have eigenvalues that are the same. Both of the eigenvalues uh, of the system are, are lambda, so they're not distinct anymore. And in this case, we have this interesting uh, transient energy growth. So I'm going to show you how to derive that today. Uh, and specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to compute um, e to the matrix A t, because we know that that's going to be the solution of this system is, you know, x of t equals e to the a t times x naught. So we want to compute the matrix exponential. And I'm going to claim that this is e to the lambda t, uh, e to the lambda t on the diagonals, but that on the off diagonal we're going to get a t e to the lambda t term. And this t e to the lambda t off diagonal is going to mean that certain parts of my state are going to get amplified uh, in this transient growth before they eventually become stable. And you can literally in Python or MATLAB plot t e to the lambda t for a negative lambda and convince yourself that this is exactly the shape you get. Um, these are called secular terms uh, and they're very, very important. So to demonstrate that you get this kind of dynamics, I'm just going to kind of walk you through how to take this matrix exponential. Um, there is a linear algebra kind of fact that I think you should know that will be helpful for proving this. Um, you could call it a proposition if you like. Um, so a proposition, it's fairly modest. Uh, if we have s times t equals t times s, these are if for two matrices s and t, and this is not true in general, not true in general, but if it is true, then, oh, that's not a then, then, sorry, that's a terrible H and I can't abide it, then e to the s times t, e to, sorry, e to the s plus t equals e to the s times e to the t. For, um, for matrices S and matrices T, okay? So this is really important. If S times T equals T times S, then, then this is true. Um, and so if you wanted to prove this, you could use the binomial theorem. Uh, so to prove, um, you would use the binomial theorem, binomial theorem, uh, and you would essentially compute S plus T to the power N, uh, equals, it's going to be a little bit of a mess, it's going to be n factorial a summation um, of j plus k equals n, j plus k equals n, uh, of s to the power j of t to the power k over j factorial k factorial. And you could essentially uh, use this 
property. And of course, if s times t equals t times s, then all of these products, you can, you can flip them. And if you write out the, um, the matrix exponential and you plug in s plus t, you're going to get you know, identity plus s plus t plus s plus t squared plus s plus t cubed. And you're going to need to use this expansion for every single one of those terms. And you'll use this fact here so that all of those terms, you can flip s and t, and you'll get the the property that you're looking for. We're going to take that for granted um, that if we have this property, then we can break our matrix exponential like this. Um, if s and t were just scalar numbers, this would always be true. But for matrices, this is not always true because this is not always true in general. OK, and so you can verify. So you can verify, um, verify that our A matrix which we're going to say is uh, lambda, 0, 0, lambda. That's going to be uh, s plus 0, 1, 0, 0. That's going to be t. You can verify that s times t, um, literally s times t is going to be 0, 0, and then lambda, 0. S times t is uh, 0, lambda 0, 0. And you could also verify that t times a, sorry, t times s is also going to be 0, 0, lambda 0. So this also equals t times s. So this property uh, holds. And so that means that e to the s plus t is going to equal e to the s times e to the t. And so e to the matrix A is just e to the s plus t. So e to the matrix A is going to be e to the s part times e to the t part. OK. Good. Um, and e to the s is really, really simple. So I'm going to switch colors again. Um, e to the s is just uh, e to the, maybe let's say e to the s t. I should put uh, you know, little put times in here little vectors of time. So e to the st is going to be e to the lambda t, 0, 0, e to the lambda t. And now all I have to compute is e to the big T, t, and that's also pretty easy. Uh, because remember, e to the big T uh, times time is going to equal you know, identity plus big T time plus big T times squared over 2 factorial plus dot, 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 dot. But here's where it gets kind of cool. This matrix times itself uh, is 0. So t squared is 0, t cubed is 0. These are all 0. And so literally, e to the big matrix t times time is just these two terms. So that's kind of cool. It's literally uh, 1 t 0 1. This is what e to the big T, t looks like. And so I can now, I can take, um, you know, this is going to be e to the st, which is e to the lambda t, 0, 0, 0, times e to the big T, t, which is 1, t, 0, 1. And if I do the math, I get that this is, you know, e to the lambda t, 0, t e to the lambda t and um, sorry, this was supposed to be an e to the lambda t too. I messed up. I messed up. Sorry, I bet you're screaming into your TVs right now or your phones or your iPads or uh, okay, so sorry, let's do that again. 1, 0 times that is just e to the lambda t, 0. That's good. t1 times this is t e to the lambda, zero, uh, lambda t, and 1 times e to the lambda t, e to the lambda t. So this just verifies that this expression I wrote down is, in fact, what you get when you compute this funky uh, matrix exponential using this weird proposition that I told you about. Okay, So that's kind of fun. Um, this would actually be a good homework. You, know, you could pause the video, and you could work out this expansion and actually prove that if this is true, then this is true by using this property here in the matrix exponential. That would be a good like homework problem. Um, but if you take my word for that, then we can break A down into the sum of these two matrices, where it's easy to compute E to the matrix S 
an e to the matrix t. Uh, e to the matrix s is literally just, you know, a it's a diagonal matrix. And this one's even easier because it's, it's power series, it's expansion, it's Taylor series expansion. You know, every power t squared, t cubed, t to the fourth is zero. So all of these die and I just have identity plus uh, big T times time. And then when I take and I multiply those two matrices, I get the solution. And it's specifically this term here, this secular term, secular term that gives us all of these interesting transient energy growth. If you plot this in Python or in MATLAB, you'll see um, that for short times, the T term dominates because the Taylor series of E is one plus T plus T squared and so on and so forth. So for short times, the T dominates and this thing has a slope of T, a slope of one. And then for longer times, the E to the minus T dominates and eventually it dies out. So this thing like literally, you know, will eventually converge to the e to the e to the lambda t, but for short times it looks like uh, like t. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, good. So you could certainly compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this thing. That would be interesting too. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to do that for you um, maybe in the next lecture. Maybe that's the next lecture I'm going to do. So in the next lecture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this A matrix. In fact, I'm going to show you how to compute eigenvectors when you have this kind of degeneracy or a repeated eigenvalue. And then we're going to talk about, you know, in general for an A matrix, what are the types, what are the canonical building blocks of an A matrix? Because I've shown you only A matrices that are two by two. But almost everything I've shown you also applies to 3x3 three three and 4x4 four four and 5x5. Five five. And they're going to be built out of these little building blocks of, you know, based on the eigenvalues. If I have complex conjugate pairs of eigenvalues or saddle eigenvalues, I'm going to be able to build, you know, my generic solutions of my generic large A matrices. And sometimes I'm going to have blocks that look like this. These are called Jordan blocks uh, with repeated eigenvalues and a little one up here. And that's going to tell me I'm definitely going to have these secular terms and I'm going to have this transient energy growth. Okay, so next time we're going to look at the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this and then put that into the, the broader context of A matrices in general. What are all of the types of, of dynamics I can get for any type of A matrix? All right, that's coming up soon. Thank you.